Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the ultimate guide in how to level up your skills as effectively as possible. This is not always the fastest way to level up your skills, but it's definitely the most effective if you take vanilla settings into consideration. Of course, the amount of puppets on a server and, ve and the loot on a server always depends on the server settings. So this guide is aimed at vanilla settings and the most effective way to level up every single skill in the game. Now, after all the research that I've done, I want to just give you guys a quick overview of what build will help you a lot if you do not like grinding any of the skills, okay? So when we look at strength, I feel the best build so that you've got the right skills right from the start is basically melee weapons. You can take melee weapons to advanced because you can level up rifles and archery very fast and high handguns you can level up as well but there isn't a major effect on on the handgun skill with you being able to shoot someone or not shoot someone okay so i'd say this is a very very effective starting build then when it comes to um endurance i do feel that this is also a very very effective starting build okay because with no skill, you absolutely suck at it. With basic, you still struggle with it. But with medium, um, you can be, with a bit of training, you can be just as good as someone with advanced, okay? And then at the dexterity skill, this is a no-brainer. You would need medium thievery at least. And for all of you that struggles with um, megs, you need medium stealth at least. And the rest is quite easy to level up. These are these take the longest to level up, and they are not. You don't level them up naturally, and yeah, this will make it not so frustrating for you. Then, when we look at intelligence, the two balls that I would go for is medium survival and medium engineering just so that you craft a lot of things that will help you at the start of the game and you've got a passive compass in case you get lost and that you can work with vehicles right from the start and you can build most of the base elements right from the start okay if you don't mind leveling up survival i would go for a build like this so these are your two options i think engineering medium is a must from the start so you can repair a vehicle easily if you want to because you need medium engineering a vehicle repair kit and a car jack to put tires on and you know and doors and stuff like that but with medical or survival that's up to you if you never get lost i'd go like this if you get lost all the time because you don't have a compass i'd go like this okay but so that's the build that i suggest to all of you but now I'm going to show you how I level up every single skill in the game. Okay, so I'm going to start with the character with no skills and give you the most effective way on vanilla settings to level up every single skill in Scum. So let's go. Okay, so starting with brawling skill. Your best and effective way to level up brawling is to jab a puppet it, or a player, but we're just going to focus on puppets today, okay? So you do not want to run in and haymaker him. You do not want to kick him. You want to jab him. And you want to make sure that your stamina stays above 90%, okay? So that if your stamina lowers, you're only going to get 2 XP per hit, and of course, you want to use the toughest puppet possible. So it's either an armored puppet or a fat puppet. So that you can get as many hits in per puppet possible. Okay? So like I said, the most effective way. So let's quickly finish this puppet. I'm going to fast forward the boring parts. And show you how much skill points we got from just jamming this jabbing this puppet and i always wait for my stamina to recover before i hit him again so that i get the max amount of xp 
Okay, so there we go. One armored puppet. Like I say, you're not always going to find armored puppets, but armored puppets is the best because they take the most amount of damage and the most amount of shots, okay? So when we look there, we got 100 XP from one puppet, 108 XP, and that's the highest you can get, okay? But like I say, make sure every shot is at full stamina so that you can get the most XP from each puppet. So you're going to need to kill 100 puppets, roughly, because your XP will increase as your level increases. But roughly, you will need to kill at, le kill at least 100 puppets like this to get to basic, okay? So is it a fun skill? No. Is it an uh, effective skill? No. Because melee weapons are just better because of range and damage output and utility. And until they give us a more interesting way to do brawling, brawling is not worth it at all. So now, let's go look at melee weapons. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the next skill on the list is melee weapons, okay? So, finally, I've known for a long time that the wooden sword does no damage, almost no damage, but finally we've got a use for it because it hits very fast, okay? And it does three, it gives you three XP every time you hit a puppet, okay? And again, try and make sure your stamina stays above 90% before you hit again. So you can just back off and then make sure you hit him with 100%, back off, hit him at 100%. But yes, this is basically a training sword for your melee weapons. And after we've killed this puppet, just plainly hitting him every time he comes close to us and backing off so that our stamina regains. I will show you guys how much XP you can get from one puppet with a wooden sword. I've tested every single weapon, melee weapon there is. And if you guys were wondering, the knuckle dusters does not count towards does not count towards uh, brawling. It counts towards melee weapons, okay? And you want to do as little damage as possible for as long as possible when it comes to melee weapons. Okay, so there we go. And exactly the same, you know, the wooden sword is basically just as weak as your fists. You get a hundred. You get um, 180 XP per armored puppet. You can use fat puppets as well. Fat puppets won't give you as much. Or you can use the three puppets I will use. Like in towns, I can get a fat one, and in towns, I can get a police one with a stab-proof vest on. So those are the two that I'll that I'll level up on. Or in armory or military point of interest, you know, or a bunker, I will use. I will only use these puppets. Um, to level up on and you do get them in the world um, in certain places where they're alone and you can just spam your skill on them okay so 100 puppets <laughs> right from the bat as well with the wooden sword um, and yeah it only takes two, two, 2 percent damage okay so not too bad so let's move on now we get to archery the third skill on the list and this takes a little bit more thinking because you want to get as many shots in as you possibly can, but you want the last shot to do as much damage as possible. So it's one in the chest, two in the armor, three in the armor, four in the armor, and the last one in the head. Okay? So doesn't matter what puppet you face, you want to hit them as many times as you can while they're still alive, and then hit them in the head for the max amount of damage at the end, okay? And that will give you 1,205 XP for one puppet, okay? So this will take about nine puppets to get to basic archery, okay? So clearly not a skill that you want to put any skill points into because it's quite easy to level up, 
and it is very, very, very effective. Okay? So, again, doesn't matter what puppet you face, you want to hit them as many times as you can without killing them, and then the last shot, you want to do a headshot to get the most amount of XP per puppet, the most effective way to level it up. Let's move on to rifles. Okay, <clears throat> now we are at rifles. The next skill on the list, and by a mile, okay, even if you use an M82, it is not worth it. Doesn't matter if you use a stronger gun. By a mile, the hunter is the best weapon, okay? One, two, three. Okay, you do not want to put a scope on the hunter to level up rifles. You want to use a normal sight, okay? And then for one puppet, you get 1,238 um, XP, okay? If you hit him twice in the chest and again once in the head for the last shot, then you'll get 100 or 200 extra XP, but I still feel this is, you know, without complicating it too much for yourself, this is still very, very fast, very, very effective per puppet, okay? So remember, you want to use the Hunter 85, just like the wooden sword is useless for PvP, and the Hunter 85 is basically useless for PvP, they are excellent for leveling up your skills. So just remember, the Hunter 85, make sure you put some kind of suppressor on there so you don't attract the entire um, map to you okay and use a sight not a scope if you use a scope it's going to level up sniping not rifles okay or don't use a sight okay you can do that as well you can just shoot them like this okay that's not a problem either so one two three Okay, don't have to use uh, don't have to use a sight. And again, about a thousand two hundred XP. Okay, very very effective per puppet. So rifles is very easy to level up in game because it's easy to get the hundred eighty five or buy it, and of course the ammo is lying everywhere. Okay, now let's get to handguns. Okay, handguns is a, is a little bit more difficult because we don't have a hunter or a wooden sword variant of the handgun. So with the handgun, you want to do as little damage as possible, but that is very difficult at the moment until they give us a .22 German pistol or something like that, okay? So for now, the weakest pistols in the game is the M9 and the Block. You can use other variances of this, like the SF-19 or the HS-9. It doesn't really matter. But as you can see, we've got zero um, handgun skill. So I'm going to show you, the again, just the most effective way to kill them because the 9mm and the .45 rounds do the same damage, okay? So we're going to go one, two, three. Okay, so for three shots, we get 837 XP, which is not that bad. Okay, so that's 830, and then we can switch to the 0.45 variance, and we can go one, two, okay. Yeah, that's roughly the same XP because we took the same amount of health from him. But I don't think two shots is right. One. Two. And it's still giving us more or less 800. Oh, hey, guys. So it looks like a block works a little bit better. With my testing, uh, um, 0.45 ammo does the same damage as 9 more ammo. Um... Looks like it's changed. <laughs> um, but in any case, whether you're hitting a pu armored puppet with three shots from an M9 um, or two shots from a uh, .45, it won't make any difference. We had 2,000... We had 2,000... Um, okay, that... We had 2,000... Let's just see here. We had 3,200. One, two... Yeah, so it doesn't matter if we hit him in the chest or the head, it still gives us about 800 XP. 
okay? So again, no need to put skill points into the handgun skill. It is a bit slower, you know, archery is definitely the fastest, um, or just as fast as the hunter, okay? And then the handgun is fast as well. So there's no real need to put any skill points into here. I just personally feel putting advanced into melee weapons, it can be fun. I must say it can be fun because when you go to advanced, then you do a lot more um, combos. You do com a combo every third shot. So it influences the attack speed, which you want with big weapons, and then available combos, okay? And then weapon melee damage. So when we look at how easily we can level up these three, I definitely feel that starting with advanced melee, uh, melee weapons is not a bad idea, guys, because clearly these two are the slowest. They are a major grind. And yeah, you know, like end game with a katana and eight strength, you know, or eight strength and advanced melee weapons and a sledgehammer, you know, or any other new melee weapons that they bring to the game. That's going to be epic, okay? You're going to be able to kill everything with one shot. Um, so, yeah, I think this is just a much more interesting uh, pick. But if you don't want to spend the time to level up rifles, you want to be good with rifles right from the start, go medium, medium. If you don't want to level up archery and you want to have that dot on your screen for longer right from the start, go medium and medium okay so let's move on to um these two right now okay now unfortunately when we go to running it says we can level it up by jogging and running okay which they clearly need to update because when you jog you don't get any xp okay no xp guys from jogging okay so the only, only way to level up running in this game is to run. That is the only way to level up running, okay? And of course, if you're running up up a hill or up, you know, of course, you can't run up a mountain because then you're going to stop running. But if you can run up, more up than down, you know, if you can run more a little bit uphill than downhill, you're going to level up your running a bit faster, and you're going to level up your constitution a bit faster, which is good as well. Okay, constitution helps you a heck of a lot. So you either want to run on a flat surface or a little bit uphill, just not up a mountain because then you won't be able to run anymore. Okay, and it's as simple as that. You level up running by running. Now we are going to level up endurance. Okay, very easy to level up endurance. You just have to walk, jog, or run with weight on you. The thing is, walking doesn't take a lot of calories. Jogging takes a little bit more, and running um, will drain you of your calories very quickly, which will force you to walk at the end of the day, okay? So after all my tests, jogging with the full backpack that has got 60 kilograms on it is a very, very effective way to level up your endurance. As you can see, you saw how fast our running skill went up, okay? And you can see that the endurance skill goes up a lot faster. So whether you're going to use any of the methods to, you know, to AFK or to crawl or whatever methods you're going to use, endurance is just a little bit faster to level up. And it's not necessary, okay? It's not really necessary to run. You can see even with jogging, the endurance goes up quite fast, okay? Um, you know, maybe you're going to get an extra point every two seconds when you run, but it's very, very important to consider um, the calories that you are burning, okay? So that's about the speed. Now that we're walking, it's a lot slower, okay? Because we are out of stamina. So that's the one method. And the other method is with our backpack, if we can find our backpack. Okay, guys, so the other way is to, if you want to, have a hiking backpack in your other hand, and then you just crawl, okay? You can just press Shift W to crawl. And that will give you also a very, you know, a very nice XP gain, and it will use 
not a lot of calories, okay? About 40% less calories than it would take to jog. The big advantage about crawling in the grass like this while you're leveling up um, endurance is that you're leveling up stealth as well, okay? Stealth is being leveled up as well while you're crawling in the grass and camouflage is being leveled up while you're crawling in the grass, okay? Which makes it a three-in-one combo, which is very, very, very effective, okay? Um, so let's carry on. Now we move on to thievery in the dexterity tree. The most effective way to level up thievery is to just naturally lockpick everything that you get in the world. The bunker lockers, the armory lockers, the naval base lockers, every single locker you find. And when you get a key card to go to the kill box and use all your screwdrivers on the kill box, because whether you succeed or fail, you are going to get 50 experience for every attempt. To do that on a lock picking board, you have to open up silver locks on a lock picking board. Okay, which for 90% of the player base will be very, very frustrating. So the most natural, effective way to level up thievery is just to open up as many lockers as you can across the world and keep collecting screwdrivers and bobby pins so that you can keep leveling up until you're at medium one day and then you won't have a problem anymore. Because with no thievery skill, lock picking will be the most frustrating thing you've ever experienced in your life. With basic thievery, it will be a bit better, but you'll still just have three seconds to feather it or do any fancy uh, methods that people teach you. And with medium, you'll have four seconds. And the sweet spot will be bigger, which will help you a heck of a lot. So I'm an average lock picker, and with medium thievery, I can do a kill box. I can um, um, defuse a puppet, you know or <laughs> diffusing a puppet is wire cutting, but I can use thievery without it being frustrating at all and, and lockpick anything that I want to lockpick. The only time where advanced thievery is going to help you is if you're a pro lockpicker and you've spent more than 100 hours practicing lockpicking and that extra little bit of space on the sweet spot will help you a ton. But if you don't have the lockpicking... Um, trained and you're not good with it, then that extra little sweet spot isn't going to help you enough to make advanced worth it, okay? So the best way, the fastest way to level up thievery is to find a hazmat locker. This is what a hazmat suit locker looks like. It's got the two big radiation symbols on it. The other one, which has got a lot of these air vents right through it, you can only find a mask and potassium, okay? So the fastest way to level up thievery is to go find five yellow screwdrivers or how many ever screwdrivers you want to find. And I'm just using an example you have uh, five yellow screwdrivers and then you just, I, I just spawned in normal lock picks from bobby pins, but of course you can make bobby pin bundles, okay? So there will be 10 in a bundle, so that's 50, um, 100, 150, 200, okay? So you have to make bundles of 10 this whole way and then just keep uncrafting the bundle until, you know, until you've used up all the screwdrivers because every time you fail a lock, it will give you 50 XP and 50 XP goes into 10,000 skill points 200 times. Okay, so if you've used 200 screwdrivers, whether you succeeded or failed, you will get to basic thievery, which will not help you yet because you will only enjoy thievery at medium or advanced. So the beginning is going to be 200 locks or lockers. That won't be that difficult. But getting to um, medium thievery will take 2,000 lockers. Okay, you, you can get there naturally. It's just going to take you very long. But if you practice lockpicking a lot, that then and you're a pro, then you can probably take the lockpicking board because although a branch lock only gives you 25 XP and a silver lock only gives you 50 on the, on the um, lockpicking board, a gold one gives you 250 XP. 
Okay, so if you have got the patience and the mental strength to lock pick gold locks, that will help you heck of a lot. But when it comes to how to level up thievery the fastest, um, when you're not doing a, 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 it effective and naturally, you're going to lock pick this hazmat locker because it has a silver lock on it and it will break your bobby pins very, very quickly. And every time you break a bobby pin, it will give you 50 XP. Be very careful if you want to do it like this because it can you can be on the sweet spot at some point and then you open the locker. The bonus is you get a hazmat suit, but you know, you're going to have to find another locker like this. So if your lock starts turning, please move the bobby pin so that you don't open the lock, if you guys understand what I'm saying. So we've got no thievery skill at the moment, okay? No thievery skill. I'm just going to show you what I do. Okay, so that was 20 bobby pins, 10%. Okay, that's the fastest way to do it. So if I keep doing this with my five yellows and my 200 bobby pins or my body bobby pin bundles, I will get to basic thievery very, 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 very fast. Okay, and then if I'm willing to go grind 2,000 screwdrivers and 2,000 bobby pins, because I'm not willing to do it naturally, and I come to this locker again, and I'm and I make sure I play on the server when there's almost no one on the server, so that nobody kills me while I'm trying to do this. Then, okay, you can get to medium thievery fast as well. So I hope that explains it all to you guys. Let's go. Now we get to demolition, and this one took me probably 12 hours because I tried everything in the book that I could think of, um, 300, um, one of my viewers and community members, he crafted every single trap yeah, that you can craft and showed me the XP that you get from it, which is not worth it at all. So to make a long story short, guys, they have made it so that demolition works like thievery. There is no easy way around demolition, okay? The only difference is you don't have to do what you did with thievery. So demolition is still easier because you don't have to go to a locker and be in a danger zone to do this. You can do this safely at your base. So there's three ways of leveling up demolition at the moment. The one way is cutting wires on a practice bomb, which is the most effective way to do it and the best way to get better at it so that you can do a kill box and be more effective in the world so that you can defuse suicide puppets for easy C4 parts and so that you can defuse mines when you try and raid. So this is just going to help you over the long run. When you defuse a practice bomb, it will give you 125 XP, which is not bad at all. And when you defuse a suicide puppet, it will give you 250 XP, so double, but that is way more risk and way very difficult to keep doing like you can do here. And then diffusing mines at bases also gives you 250 XP. But again, um, you know, you can't do that consistently. So overall, the practice bomb wins. And by the time that you get to medium thievery, some of my community members said that if you want six seconds on the wires in the kill box, or you want those extra seconds on mines, then you just need to get to, you just need to get halfway to advanced demolition. Okay, but when, once you've leveled up to medium demolition on the practice bomb, guys, you will not need six seconds. Trust me. Okay, you will be able to defuse to do the kill box or defuse a suicide puppet or, um, you know, um, defuse a mine when you spend the time wire cutting this. So all you do is you're holding your button, you go disarm trap. Okay, and then you're going to get six seconds every single time. If you fail, they're just going to give you another try. So you can fail as many times as you want. But my biggest tip is just to take your time. Because every time you fail, you don't get experience. And you can make the time go higher as well. Okay, I can set this timer to, I don't know, no one's ever going to need 30 seconds. But I can literally set it to 30 seconds. 
and now I can take this wire and I can cut it and I can take this wire and I can cut it and I can take this wire and I can cut it. Okay? And there I've got 125 XP. And then I can go disarm trap and I can just click the up button 10 times or five times to get 10 seconds because 10 seconds is still going to give me enough time to just follow the wire with, with my mouse and cut the wires, okay? So there's very easy ways to do it. And then once you get used to it and you don't care when you lose or fail, then you're just using the six seconds to slowly but surely follow the wires, okay? And if you do this 10 times, it's going to help you quite a bit, okay? So that's three times... Four times. Five times. Six times. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay. And there we go. Not bad at all, guys. Personally, a lot easier than thievery. And like I say, once you do this up until medium demolition, which will take you some time, but it will benefit you overall. Okay. So do it like this. This is the best fastest most effective way there's no other way i'm going to skip motorcycling aviation and driving because all three of them work exactly the same way it is all connected to distance traveled so the further you travel with a, with a car the more you level up driving the, the further you travel with four wheeled vehicles like a quad and a car and whatever they bring into the game, the further you travel with it, the more you level up driving. The further you travel with two-wheeled vehicles with an engine, not a bicycle, okay, a motorcycle, um, the more you're going to level up motorcycling. And the further you fly with a plane, the more you're going to level up aviation. It's as simple as that, okay? Since we've only got this piece of junk here at the moment, <laughs> I'm going to show you how... You know, how simple it is. So you get into the car. And you drive. And when you drive, you want to drive on straight roads. So this road down here is very, very nice, except for the red zone. Guys, you just want to find a nice, long, straight road. So that you can cover as much distance as possible. And so that you can keep your stop speed as much as possible. Okay? You want to go as fast as possible for as long as possible without taking in any unnecessary turns, okay? And that's how you level up driving, motorcycling, and, and aviation. Now we're going to cover throwing, okay, since we skipped those three. Now we're going to cover throwing. Now there's the best... You know, the most effective way to get the most out of every puppet, and there's the fun way, okay? The fun way is to have shuri kunai knives or shurikens to throw them with, to kill them quite easily. And I just activated my throwing mode on all three, so that if I press four, I'm going to throw the shurikens. If I press five, I'm going to throw the small little stones. And now I press 3, I'm going to throw the kunai when I press G. So this is one way. It's a fun way, okay? Because you can kill them this way. Okay, now we've got the shurikens. Not much different be difference between those guys, but... You know, as you can see, 325 XP from one puppet, which isn't too bad, okay? It's a fun way.
But if we're looking at the most effective way, again, to get the most um, the most out of each and every puppet, okay, then you won't even be able to kill a puppet with 50 stones. I think I've got 20 here, so I'm just going to spawn in 30 more stones. Now, again, the... The kunais and the shurikens are really, really fun ways. I mean, you can throw puppets with a sledgehammer, guys. That's also really, 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 really fun. But if you want to level up throwing, then the stones are by far the best because you get the most XP from a puppet. The only reason you wouldn't want to use the stones is because it's a very patience game. So you guys can see we've only got... 325, and the shuriken the kunai does roughly the same amount of damage. So now when we spawn in this puppet, you have to be patient because you have to throw him, and then you have to wait for this rock to stop moving. Throw him, wait for this rock to stop moving. Throw him, you know, wait for that rock because if you don't wait for the rock to stop moving, it will glitch out. You will get problems later, guys. You will get problems later, okay? So just be patient. And just keep throwing him. And I'm going to throw him now until he dies. Let's fast forward this. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop throwing this guy. I have killed other puppets with the stones, but you get the point, okay? This is, I've always been, I've been throwing this guy for 10 minutes, okay? You guys get the point. It's the most effective way per puppet, okay? You can play for a very, very long time with one puppet inside a house, inside a building, wherever you want to play with a puppet. Lead the puppet into your base. Let the puppet follow you into the base, and then you throw the puppet with rocks. The only negative thing about rocks is you can see as it bounces everywhere, it destroys your gear. Okay, if you've got a sewing kit, it's not a problem. But like I say, the the shurikens and the kunives are a little bit more fun. Um, and this is... I don't know, if you always wanted to kill, throw people with stones when you were young, you can, you know, have some fun with this and just throw the puppets forever with stones. Just take your time in between. And that is how we level up throwing. Okay, the final one in um, Dexterity Stealth. Like I showed you guys, now, now, all you do is you crawl in grass. Okay, very, very easy. And you can do this as well. You can level up stealth like this as well. You're not going to level up camouflage like this. Okay, you're only going to level up camouflage if you crawl in the grass. But if you want to level up your stealth in-game as well, I think a lot of us would rather more do this than, you know, than crawling around. So you can do this, and you can crawl quite fast, okay, to sneak up to someone or to get closer to someone. So if you guys do this, this levels up your stealth skill as well, okay? You can't, you can't walk. Walking grass is not going to help. Jogging grass is not going to help. So you either have to crouch to level up your stealth, okay? You can see it's leveling up, or you have to crawl. In grass, okay? Not on a road, in some kind of cover, and there's a lot of grass, okay? Grass works very, very well. And that's how you level up stealth. Okay, so... Now that we've done, now that we're done with that, now that we're done with the dexterity tree, um, I think we covered the running. You guys saw that leveling up endurance is a lot faster than leveling up running. And if you're going to do do any AFKing, then endurance is going to level up naturally, of course. Um, so whether you go for it, you know, going for it, runs and vast running is not a bad option. Not a bad option as well either. Just like going for advanced melee weapons. Is not a bad option for the long run but when it comes to dexterity 
Um, I definitely feel because a lot of people struggle with Megs and a lot of people struggle with thievery. And since we saw it's not, you know, if you take the two of them that you need to level up the same now, Demolition wins by a mile with the one that's easier and the one that's m the least amount of frustrating. One tip that I can give you with leveling up Demolition is put your game sound off. So make sure you're in a safe area like your base when you level up Demolition. Put your sound off because that if you hear that for an hour, every time you're successful, you might just throw your computer out of the out of the window. Okay, not sure. So when you level up demolition, put the game sound off. Okay, relax. Put some good music on that you enjoy, that you listen to anyway, and then just cut the wires. Okay, get yourself into a zone, get yourself relaxed, and you know just cut the wires like that, and that will be much easier. So for now, my best bold because we know what we know is medium thievery which i use most of the time and i've got no problem with it and it gives you that extra second and medium stealth we can level up the others quite easily and without wanting to throw our pieces out of the window okay and then of course stealth is very important versus players and of course very important versus mix and if you want to get to advanced, of course, you're going to gain, you know, your skill. You're going to gain skill points in stealth faster and faster and faster the higher you go in skill. So <clears throat> the two winners here for me to put points in at the start is thievery and stealth. Let's move on to intelligence. We are almost at the end, ladies and gentlemen. And at the final attribute, intelligence... We are going to start with awareness. Now, just pre preparing this for you guys already gave me 5,000 XP. So just to give you guys a quick breakdown, we all know that we get a, we get 5 XP points from every, anything that we see in our vicinity. We've got a bunch of sticks, small sticks in our vicinity now. But if you go to a container and you drag the item out of the container onto the ground, that gives you 5 XP. Every item that can be seen in your vicinity, that's not inside a container, but outside of a container, that can be seen by you, gives you 5 XP. So there's two ways that you guys can do this. You can go to a place in the forest, dump 200 items there, okay? And then walk more than 150 meters away and dump 200 items there. I don't care what you guys do. The only reason I'm showing you this is because I like to multitask. So... I cut down the sticks so that I'm leveling up survival at the same time. Because cutting up sticks and cutting up um, trees and cutting up logs gives you survival. But for the most effective way for me with awareness is you get a branch from every tree. So then what I do, I make a big blueprint of a fire here, of a bonfire. I stand like this with the tree branch in my hand. And then I select cut the tree branch. Because I'm looking this way, the tree branch is going to just spread out that way. Okay? So I cut a tree branch like this with one going through the back of me. Cut a tree branch like this with one going through the back of me. With one going through the back of me and one going through the back of me. Okay? You can see. And the reason I like the sticks is because it spreads. Like the, the stick spread all this way, but I can stand in the center of, of it, kick and Cut every long stick with a metal saw. A metal saw is a must to get five small sticks from every long stick. Um, and then it makes a nice little circle around me. I like that. It spreads out the sticks nicely and it levels up my survival. So this bonfire, okay, is... I'm just going to press tap control to range find you. And then I'm going to hold control just to get that blueprint there. That blueprint is 175 meters away from me. I have tested this um, a little bit closer, a little bit further, but I didn't want this to fail, okay? I didn't want to make this too close, so... And I don't have a problem 100, running 150 meters. So how we're doing this is we're resetting your awareness. So once you've jogged, I just want to put this here, and the chainsaw is just to cut down the tree and the logs as fast as possible, Okay, um, but I think I'm going to keep this with me in any case. 
So once we've jogged around this campfire, because we made all the little circle of sticks about this far away from the blueprint, once we've jogged around and gotten all the um, awareness points, okay, we've got about 5,140 now, okay? Now what we can do is we can run over here, or you can crawl over there to level up your stealth, your strength. You know, you can put, you can add six um, toolbox to your hiking backpack. While you're crawling there, you can level up your endurance, your stealth, your camo, you know, all those things. So there's many ways for you to combine all these tasks. But we're going to run now, which is 164 meters away. We're going to run to this bonfire where, where I did exactly the same. Now, I only used four branches, which I made the little circles, guys. You can make more if you want to. Just understand that you can't gain more than 200 XP, 2,000 XP in an area. Okay? So, it doesn't help you crashing a server or putting a server under pressure. You cannot gain more than 2,000 XP in a certain area. Okay? So, we've got 5,140 there. And our sticks have disappeared. There was a server restart, guys. There was a server restart. But I can just quickly show you what I did there, okay? So you cut down a tree, you get this branch, you stand like this, and take it in your hands, and you have to use the metal saw for anything that says branch or stick, okay? And then you cut it, and it's going to go this way behind you. The restarts always catch me off guard on the test server because i'm doing all the tests on the test server okay so all the sticks go this way so i did one like this i did one like this so i only did four you guys can go one two three four okay you can have circles all around the bonfire just don't do it at a server restart as we see that's not very very good and then i just cut up about 10 sticks Okay, so I'm going to cut up 10 sticks quickly just to show you guys what it looks like. Okay, there we go. So you guys can see this, see this entire line of sticks has turned into this beautiful, okay, not beautiful, just this nice round round pile here that is giving me more than 50 sticks in my area the reason i just went four directions is because 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 is 200 200 times 5 xp is a thousand skill points so with just four branches in four directions where i make these little circles and i wanted to keep this circle quite far from that circle Okay, so that it doesn't um, doesn't affect what I can see and what I can't see. Because if you've got too many items in the area, you can't see them and you can't get XP for them. Okay, so I made a circle here with 50, circle here with 50, circle here. So every time I come here and I just run in a circle, I'm going to get a thousand experience. Okay, a thousand experience there we can see i already gained something but now okay hopefully those things don't disappear on me now i run to the other bonfire that's not going to take me very long and i think i'm going to end on about 6500 or 6400 xp when i run around this bonfire so this is just a very fast very effective way to level up your survival because you're chopping down trees and um, branches and if you want to crawl between the two places you can do that as well and here we go now please don't tell me they have disappeared as well no here it is okay there we go guys so these ticks haven't disappeared um okay looks like the server restart did have a bit of an effect okay 6400 there we go okay there's my here's my other little bundle of sticks okay and yeah here's my other little bundle my little, other little circle of sticks so there's a thousand xp now i just run back to this one so this should only give me about i think 200 yeah this circle we're on 6400 that should that circle should only give me about 200 so here i'm walking around the circle yeah it's about 200 guys so once you've got 
okay? Once you've got, like, I can, 50 sticks, okay? So I can do this just to show you guys. So we go in spawn stick, and we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, and then we go this way, and we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then we look this way, and we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so there's a 1,000 XP, because there is about 50 sticks in my vicinity. There's about 50 sticks. Okay, the, yeah, the 50 sticks. Okay, there we go. You have to walk around until you see three lines. You have to see three and a half lines so that you know, okay, it's 50 sticks in your vicinity. And then this circle here is, of course, going to give me the 50 sticks. And this one here is, of course, if I just move around a bit. That's why I like the circle, because sometimes you can't see all the sticks in your area. In any case, so we gained 1,000. We are on 7,500. Now we just run back to our other circle. So with these nice, perfect circles that I made literally, this should be very easy. So seven and a half, I'm going to end on eight and a half, okay? So I'm going to come to this little circle, just walk around it so that my character can see all of them. I'm going to walk to this circle here. Just walk around it so that I can see all the sticks in my vicinity. Going to come to this circle over here. Just walk around it so that I can see all the sticks in the vicinity. And then I'm going to walk to this circle here. Just walk around till I can see all the sticks in the vicinity. And there we go, eight and a half thousand. So it's a thousand, 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 thousand. Okay. So if you do five trips, you're at basic. You're at basic awareness. If you do fifty trips, you're at medium awareness. If you do five hundred trips, you're at advanced awareness. Okay. But again, for me, at least make sure the two points are 150 meters away. If you guys want to shorten it, you know, if you guys want to see what's the closest you can get the two points, okay, so that, that your awareness keeps refreshing, you can add that down in the comments below. Um, but for now, this is a very effective way. Like I say, you can make, you can make um, eight circles here instead of four circles, okay? But just make sure your circles is, you know, you can make a circle, 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 circle with the sticks. Just make sure they're not glitching over each other to limit what you can see around you. Then it's 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. And you're at basic awareness, okay? So, guys, if this video is helping you, just do me a favor and click that like button. And, you know... If you haven't subscribed yet, you want to see and learn everything there is to see and learn about Scum, hit the subscribe button. And a comment helps the channel a lot as well. So if you've got nothing to say and you just want to say thank you, you know, just give me a thank you down in the comments and I'll give you a comment back. Okay? Let's go on to camouflage. Okay, so camouflage is extremely easy. I don't really need to... I don't really need to cut the video, guys. Camouflage is the easiest skill in the world, the laziest skill in the world, if you just want to focus on camouflage. You see the grass, you lie down in the grass, and you go on with your day. And then every time the server restarts, you go lie in the grass again. Just make sure you feed your guy, but I mean, the, you, you're not using any calories now, okay? You just lie down in the grass. This is the loveliest AFK method ever, okay? As long as you're lying in grass... You're leveling up camouflage. Very, 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 very easy. Okay? So that's camouflage. Laziest skill, skill in the game, and I think the most broken skill in the game. But this is very effective. Let's get to engineering. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we get to engineering, which took me roughly 12 hours nonstop. Because I literally crafted every single item in the crafting menu with zero skills to see what every single item gives me. And I crafted every single item in the building section to see what every single item gives me to see what's the most effective way to level up engineering. And after a lot of hours, 
the winner for no engineering skill is still our little faithful single little door frame. Okay? Gives you about 80 XP per plank, and which is much lower than it used to be. But if you compare it to the XP that you get from building your base or your walls or anything in your base, it wins by a mile. And, of course, we've got the metal saw with us, which is going to give us that one knife use as well. But I'm going to start the timer now, and then you guys will see with a single door frame how long it takes to get to basic survival. I've got 100 planks. Let's see how many planks are left by the time that I'm done. So, shift, um, shift F. Okay, to add everything, destroy. Alt C. Okay, let's just craft that again. Of course, it does reset it. Okay. Shift F. Let's see. There we go. Exactly 100 planks, okay, to get to basic engineering from no engineering, okay? That is the easy part. And, of course, when I got to basic engineering, I did exactly the same thing. Crafted everything in the crafting menu, crafted everything in the building menu. When I got to um, medium engineering, I did the same. And when I got to advanced engineering, I did the same. And the only thing that you craft that scales up. So the single door frame doesn't scale up. So after basic, it is not the best anymore, just like my previous guides. But the item that does scale up, it doesn't double the XP that you get, but it increases the XP that you get by about 50% every time you level up from basic to medium to advanced, okay? The only item that opens up and that is worth it after I've crafted everything in the crafting menu and building menu is the wheelbarrow, okay? So when you put down the wheelbarrow, it takes nine planks, but we're not going to wait now until we get to medium engineering. We're just going to see how many planks does it take to get to um, 10%. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's 100 planks, okay? We can't add the knife. Oh, we can still add the knife use. So having a stone knife on you so that you're not breaking your tool is always great, okay? But you can still use the stone knife. Or if you have a knife that you found in a bunker that you don't want to use, you can have that knife in here if you don't want to craft stone knives, okay? So we are at zero, okay, on the way to medium. So let's see how fast we can get to 10%. We're going to fill that blueprint. Okay, so that's two, blueprint, that's two blueprints so far. 2%. Okay, looks like 10 blueprints. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, as you guys can see, the experience that you're gaining from the wheelbarrow does increase as you get a gain experience. Okay, this is the only one that scales up as you getting higher with engineering so the winner when with no engineering is definitely still the single door frame and the winner past basic and medium and advanced is the wheelbarrow because that's the only thing that's scaling up um, at the moment you are going to gain experience by building your base but much 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 slower than this guys much slower than this okay so it's going to take 100 planks with our methods to get to basic, it's going to take a thousand planks 
to get to not even because we see we're gaining more experience, let's say 900 or whatever the case would be. Okay. Um, to get to medium and then, you know, it's going to scale up to advanced as well, which isn't that bad. So that is engineering. The next one on our list is farming. So to level up farming, um, building the plots, the plots don't give you that as much experience. Adding the seeds only gives you 25 experience, which takes very long depending on your farming skill, but this is how to level up farming in any case. And then adding, adding fertilizer gives you 50 experience, um, which is faster, but I mean, you can't add, keep adding fertilizer un unless you want to destroy your uh, farm plot and build it again and destroy it and build it again. So that's not worth it either. The fastest way that I have seen to level up um, farming at the moment is just getting two liter bottles like this. Okay, just getting two liter bottles like this. Whether they've got cool drink in or not, of course you want to you want to drink the cool drink, empty them, um, so that they've just got water in. But the best best way to level up farming, guys, is you can't do this with a gasoline canister. You can't do it with a watering can. You can only do this with cans, water bottles, canteens, and two liter bottles. So very very simple. To gain a farming skill, you just spill water from a two-liter bottle onto the farm. And it doesn't take up a lot of time. Okay. And then you just take the next bottle and you spill it. Okay. So you can do this on repeat all the time. And that's quite an effective way of leveling up farming, guys. It takes quite a while, okay? So I'm just going to put a seed in for you guys and fertilize, which I know isn't going to give a lot of XP. And we're just going to check the pesticide, herbicide, and fungicide, and I'll be back with you now. Okay. <clears throat> you guys can see that I added all... Okay, I added the pesticide, fungicide, weed repellent. Um, you can't really wait for weeds to grow. That's not a repeatable method to level up your farming skill. But as you can see, the water in the farm plot is at max. It's at 4.7 lit 4 liters. Even though it's full, it doesn't matter. When I spill the water, even though the plot is full of water... I'm still getting experience. And this also gets more and more and more um, the more you, you gain experience, guys. So this will get faster and faster and faster as you go along. So, yep, yeah, that's how to level up farming. Just keep watering them. Drown them to death. Now we get to sniping. And again, the Hunter 85 is king because of its damage output. Zero sniping skill. It doesn't matter how far away from him you are, okay? This is not going to take very long. And you can zoom, you know, that you can zoom in, but zoom out to make it easier for yourself. And that gave us 1,250 XP, just like, okay, just like archery rifles and handguns. Um, although handguns was a little bit slower, that only gave us 800 XP per puppet. But rifles, because we used the hunter, and archery, because we used the bone arrows, gave uh, or the wooden arrows, still gave us 1,200 XP per puppet. And again, as you level up, you will gain more XP. So that was about four shots. So now what we can do is we can go one, two, three... <clears throat> in the head and that's a little bit more than 1200 okay it's almost 1500 again the same thing applies you want to hit them as many times as you can and the last shot you want to you want to make a headshot because it's based on the amount of damage that you do to them but it doesn't work when you're using an m82 if i shoot an m82 which is supposed to do a lot more damage, 
Okay. It's like it's supposed to like kill 10 puppets in a row. It only gives me like 400 XP. So it's definitely based on the amount of hits that you do. <clears throat> but making sure that last shot is a headshot <clears throat> when you know exactly how many shots it takes to kill them. Okay. You can fine tune it like that. So that those that was two puppets with a hunter, which is 28% towards basic. Extremely easy. Again, not something that you want to put skill points into. Um, so yeah, let's quickly go look at survival. Ladies and gentlemen, the best way to level up survival, although you guys already saw why I like cutting up sticks and multitasking various skills, we are just focusing on a skill by skill basis. However you want to combine this is up to you. It does give you survival for chopping up those sticks and, you know, multitasking everything. But if you're talking about the fast, the most effective way to level up survival, you're going to need a chainsaw. Okay, if you find a chainsaw, all you want to do is press R to start it, or you can go turn on, but R works as well. And if it doesn't want to start, you just need to get gasoline. Now, if you've got a gasoline canister with you, you can fill up the chainsaw with one use. Okay, so you'll be able to fill up the chainsaw about, about 40 times. Okay, so, so you will fill up the chainsaw 40 times. So you press R to start the chainsaw. And I have timed all of the processes. I have timed how long does it take to cut down a tree versus the XP. I have timed how, how long does it take to cut down a branch versus the XP. And the sticks and crafting rope and crafting everything in the book. Every craftable item in the book. I've spent a total of about 48 hours on this, guys. So, you know, you don't have to wonder about this. So... The time that it takes you to cut down a tree and branches with an axe or a saw or a chainsaw, it doesn't matter, is the, the XP versus the time that it takes you to do it. The fastest you can gain survival is by cutting down a tree with an axe or a saw or a chainsaw and cutting down branches with, a, um, with an axe or a saw or a chainsaw. Okay, and with a chainsaw, it's just going to be extremely fast. So we are now at 5,925 XP because of that, those sticks that we did. So we're just going to go cut. And immediately after the tree, we want to do all the logs. Okay, so we just cut down the tree and we cut all the um, logs into planks and the chainsaw is the only thing that will give you six planks from every log. Very important, you must use the best axe possible that you can find or that you can craft with a tree and with logs to get the most amount of planks. But when it comes to the branch, the tree branch and the long sticks, you never want to touch a branch or sticks with a chainsaw, okay? Then the ultimate item is the saw, okay? Because the saw is the only item that's going to give you the most amount of sticks for awareness, okay, out of everything. So I'm just going to drop it here. And then I'm going to drop it here. And then I'm going to drop it here and let it point. I'm going to let that V point that way. So the saw is the only one that's going to give you the most amount of sticks when it pops out to give you the most amount of awareness. And of course, the branch is going to give you 100 experience as well. So we're going to end on 6,800. Okay, 6,800. So roughly every tree is going to give you a 1,000 experience if you don't cut up the, the branches, okay? If you do, if you want exactly a 1,000 XP from every tree, then you're going to have to cut up some of the branches as well. 
But when you compare the time it takes you to cut the branches and the XP that you get, it's not worth it, okay? But you can go ahead and cut four branches if you want exactly a 1,000 XP from each tree. Of course, some trees are going to give you more logs than others. The desert area, the south, has got a lot of trees that gives you a ton of logs. And of course, when you're using the chainsaw, a tree will even give you more logs than it would have given you if you used an axe or a saw. And then if you cut up the logs, the logs are going to give you more planks, okay? So it's just faster and it's more effective. But that is how you level up. There we're, at, we're, there we're up with 1,000 XP, okay? So very important, if, if speed is your focus, you want to cut down the tree with an axe or a chainsaw and then just the, the, just the logs. Because the log takes 12 seconds to cut, and gives you 75 experience, where the stick um, takes you almost the same amount of time, or I think more, I'm not sure, almost the, the same time for 50 XP. So, of course, the log is better. The tree does take a little bit longer, but it gives you 100 XP, and the branch is a little bit longer, but it also gives you 100 XP. So, your best item Time versus experience is the logs that you get from the tree after you've cut down the tree. And that is how you level up survival. Ladies and gentlemen, the final test. Once again, if you enjoy this video, just click the like button. It really helps me out a lot. And if you want to see and, and learn everything there is to see and learn about scum, then just click that subscribe button. And once again, if you want to help the channel in any way and you don't have something to say, just give me a thank you down in the comments below. Okay, so final skill is the medical skill. Okay, and after a bunch of testing, this one's a little bit more complicated and takes a little bit of effort. Um, a little bit difficult to do if you've got a base. Okay, um, so if you want to level up medical, your base is at risk, and the you know, it's um. Yeah, it's just going to be difficult to to do to do this because you have to destroy your flag. Or you have to ask someone else to craft the spike trap. Or you have to walk willingly over someone else's spike trap. Because your spike trap won't hurt you when you've got a flag down. And you don't really want to destroy your flag, you know, to use this, uh, the trap and then build your flag again. Because if you've got no flag, the base doesn't belong to you. That will cause a lot of bugs and you're going to bother the admins and then it's just not going to be good. Okay? So... What I would suggest is rather look for someone that has spike traps um, or get a friend, okay? That's not in your clan, but someone that you've made friends with on the server and use each other's spike, um, spike traps, okay, um, to do this. So all you do is you go to the building menu and one Bob spike trap is more than enough, guys. So you can do this at someone else's base, but to do it at your base, you have to destroy the flag. And before I walk over this thing, or run over this thing, let me just look at my notes quickly. So, to heal a C1 wound will give you 25 XP, and it doesn't, it doesn't take too long. Uh, to heal a C2 wound gives you 50 XP, um, and also doesn't take too long. A C3 wound gives you 75 XP, but now it's starting to take long, and it does a lot of damage. So you can get a lot of C1 wounds and still survive and heal, you know, just get a lot. So if you just get C1 wounds, you can get like 10 C1 wounds, heal all of them with, with, um, with rags or dirty rags, whatever you guys want to do, guys. If you guys don't care about dying because you've got all the money in the world, then use rags from puppets, use dirty rags. Because you don't worry about, you're not worried about the infection and you're not worried about dying, okay? So if you've got a ton of money, you don't care about respawning, then use dirty rags from puppets if it's easier for you. Um, you know, I don't suggest using clean rags, but if you can get, you know, if you can farm clothing that you don't need, like raincoats, which is easy to find, um, or backpacks that you don't want, that's easy to find, you can, you can do it with clean rags. It's just going to take a lot more uses. But you are going to have to farm alcohol and um, absinthe specifically. We all know where to get absinthe, okay? The marketplaces in the big city, um, 
bunkers, shops, you know, we can get absinthe very easily. So then we're going to have to disinfect a lot of rags to make aseptic rags, which is 100% durability, which is the most effective way to heal yourself. So what I'm trying to say is you can get 10 um, C1 bleeding markers walking over this trap. And 10 times 25 is 250. And you can do that in one go. Or you can get like five C2 bleeding markers and still survive and still get 250 XP every time you do this. But if you want to get the same amount of C3 bleeding markers, which is going to be, you know, it's going to be like three C3 bleeding markers, then you're starting to play with death. Then, um, you know, healing every one of them is going to take you very long and like a c4 only gives you 100 xp so you're going to have to have three c4s to get around 250 xp in one go which is just not worth it the chances that you're going to die is extremely high it's going to take extremely long to heal that wound okay so out of all my testing i've seen that c1s and c2s are perfect c2s are be better than c1s time wise but, you know, whether you use C1s to farm the medical skill, or whether you use C2s to farm the medical skill, it's perfectly fine, okay? And I don't know, if you've got a clan member, maybe they can just keep hitting you with something that does almost no damage, like the wooden sword or a shovel or whatever the case would be. If you've got a clan, you know, hit each other, <clears throat> you know, and that can give you controlled damage because the wooden sword and the shovel, I wouldn't use the shovel. The wooden sword only does about 10% um, damage, okay? So that's a nice way to level it up as well. But in any case, let's see here. We have got zero medical, so we're going to run over this. I don't like jogging or walking. We're going to run over this, okay? And then we're going to see we've got three C1s. And we're going to run again. Look at our health. Our health is at 73. That's not too bad. Run again. Okay. Our health is halfway now. Um, and now we can't run anymore. Okay. So now we're just going to click on the C1. One and um, two of them is more than enough. And you want to fill up this bar to complete it. If anyone is going to tell you doing it one at a time is better. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, okay? So, um, that's going to give me 25 experience. Let's see. If I just add one to it. No, it's not, okay? It's not. It's not going to give you the full experience if you just use one rag, okay? So, use all the rags that you, all the bandages that you need. Um, you're going to need three. Then there's no medical skill, guys. You're going to need three for a C2. And like you say, this you guys can see this is already starting to take a little bit longer, okay? But it gets, it just gets too time-consuming when you go to um, C3s and C4s, okay? So there, everything is healed now, okay? Um, and we got almost 100 XP, okay? And you can go over this, but what I do to keep running is I get painkillers. Okay, I get painkillers, and then I just eat all, and then I just like to cancel it at about before, you know, just, just half the tablets. And then I want to wait until the painkillers are at 100%, because it doesn't matter if you eat one painkiller or all the painkillers, it's just going to extend the time that lasts, but you can see I can't run. And I want to run over this. I don't want to walk over this. It's probably going to kill me, okay? So I'm going to, if you wait, and you can do this before a fight, guys. You can take painkillers before a fight because once the painkillers passes 100% effectiveness, you can see that the percentage is going up, then the painkillers are going to help you to run even though you're getting injured, okay? They're going to be at the max effective effective range so you're going to see i can't run until my painkillers that i've drank gets to 100 percent okay some advanced tips here you know with luthias so you're gonna we're gonna keep we can't run if somebody shot us we're, we're definitely dead but if we took painkillers 
before we went into a fight and we waited for the painkillers to hit 100%, then we'll be able to run. Okay, so here we go. We're going to hit 100% now. Now we can run. Okay. So using this with painkillers is quite effective because oh. now we can run over it again. Okay. And I think, yeah. okay, did it open up everything? Where is it? Okay, now I've lost sight of it. Where's my bloody trap? There it is. So I'm going to run yeah. over it again. And there, okay, so now we've got a bunch of things that we need to need to heal. Remember, this is one health bar. We're going to see how much we can get out of one health bar because it's going to take time to lie down on our back and heal to 100% again, okay? So that's just what we can achieve with one, yeah, with one health bar. Maybe we're going to push it one last time. Maybe we're going to run over there one last time. Painkillers percentage is just getting higher and higher. So that's not going to stop us. We're going to be the running man, no matter what we do. And, okay. Let's see. Just be, if we die, guys, okay, if we die, we've gotten 200 experience so far of one health bar and let's run over the Do trap it. again okay okay now we're in danger yeah yeah now it's becoming c3s i think we did yeah c3s takes a little bit long that's why i say guys c3s is starting to starting to get scary okay um and that's why i say the more you run over it the worse it gets okay and yeah, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. Okay? We are not going to make it. Okay. But, I mean, a C3 gave us 75. So we almost got about 300 experience there. From every, every one of them. And if you guys are like, hey, I want to level up medical as fast as possible, you're going to have to loot bunkers and get, get Phoenix Tears. Because with Phoenix Tears, you can get 300 experience and just before you die, inject yourself with Phoenix Tears, lie down, then everything heals extremely quickly until you're at 100%. Repeat the steps, take a Phoenix Tear, repeat the steps, take a Phoenix Tear, and then you can gain like 1,000 experience within five minutes, okay? Because you've got the Phoenix Tears. That is the ultimate way to level up medical. And no, using Phoenix Tears does not, does not level up your medical skill. Phoenix Tears just helps you to not die, okay? So best way is the way that I showed you now or let, it, let your friend hit you with a wooden sword. And, and then the ultimate way to do it alone is to use Phoenix Tears just before you die and keep repeating the steps so that you can get at least a 1,000 experience from every run. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I appreciate all your support. I'm not going anywhere. And this is just going to get better and better down the line. I can promise you that. So have a great day. Keep surviving. Stay strong. Cheers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, me and Diamond have just played around a bit. He enjoys playing around with stuff just like me. And, of course, he loves beating the poop out of me. That's definitely a favorite hobby of his. Um, but in any case, the reason that we didn't get bleeding markers or the reason that it healed itself immediately is because it was blunt damage. So the wooden sword didn't cut us, really. Um, the shovel didn't cut us. The club without anything on it didn't cut us. But the club with barbed wire does cut us, which causes a bleeding marker. Um, and, of course, the club with nails is going to do a, a more damage than the club with um, barbed wire on. But the bleeding effect of the weapon, the bleeding effect of the weapon is extremely important. So when he's hitting me with this club, it's doing about 16 damage to me. But, I mean, it's controlled damage. Um, so we can get in about six C1 bleeding markers, which adds up to 150 experience for one life bar, okay? So I'm going to ask him to hit, he's hit me in the leg, he's hit me in the arm. I'm going to ask him to, okay, hit me on this arm, Diamond. Okay, so he's hit me on that arm. That's again 16, okay, which I can heal. 
So this is a nice and controlled way of leveling up the medical skill. But I think the club with barbed wire is probably the best. Again, you guys can play around with it. Uh, because I'm sure the nailed one is going to do more damage. Okay, Diamond, hit me with the, with the nail one, buddy, which I know is going to do more damage. And try and hit me in the chest. <coughs> yep, exactly like I thought, guys. The barbed wire, uh, or the, the nails on the club, the nails on the bat, does a lot more damage than the barbed wire on the club or the barbed wire on the bat, okay? So if you want to do this in a controlled environment and you want to beat your friends up and your friend, you know, you just guys just want to beat each other up to level up medical, then the club with barbed wire on um, is a very, very good way of doing it, okay? And I think that is it. The, that is officially the ultimate guide. Cheers. Finally. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and if you want to get a preview of my rant video, not my rant video, my bugs that has to be fixed as soon as possible and a long explanation to the developers, we've got Mr. Naked here, okay, with the hiking backpack, a 35 pound bow and two explosive arrows versus a fully geared, okay, Diamond Dagger is fully geared. Diamond, can you put on your helmet as well for me, please, buddy? Okay, fully geared. Fully geared with a, with a tactical vest on, okay? Fully geared player with a fully armored car. Are you guys ready? There we go, guys. Two arrows. And he's dead. I don't even think I needed to hit the car. Let's check that quickly. Let's see if we needed to hit the car. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Fun way to end the video number two. Um, Diamond Dagger is fully geared again. He told me that the first arrow took him down to 14% HP and gave him like two C2s. Gave him bleeding markers as well, okay? So now we're going to see. Um, we know that we can kill him if we hit the window. The first arrow almost basically killed him, and the second arrow definitely killed him. But let's see. Do we need to hit him? Okay, let's find out. Did you take any damage, buddy? Yeah, I'm down to 27%, but the highest bleed I've got is a C2 right now. I've got like six bleeds, and five of them are C1, and I've only got one C2. I could, I could heal up from this, no problem. Okay, so guys, you guys can see I hit the bonnet. So if you hit any of the windows, okay, that is on his level, the, the two arrows are definitely going to kill him. So two arrows to the win any of the window areas is going to kill um, the player that you're aiming at okay so you if you hit the two front windows or the two or the side i think if you hit the side it's just going to kill him if you hit the two if you give two arrows to the front window it's probably going to kill both drivers in the front okay two arrows to the sides you know like you guys can figure that out but basically two explosive arrows renders this I don't even know what to call this anymore. Um, useless. And that will be in my next fatal bug report. See you guys later. Cheers.